the Lord be with you. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Testament lesson, we hear the original story of the Passover when the firstborn of the Israelites are spared from death by the sign of the blood of the Lamb. 
a reading from the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family and a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, and they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire, with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning, and anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down any firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The Word of the Lord. chapter of St. Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, beginning at the 23rd verse. 
For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, 
you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your presence in the Holy Eucharist, for your command to love one another. We pray for your strength to serve one another with the food of your presence and your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus gathered on this Thursday night of Holy Week with his disciples in the upper room, perhaps in a room that's still visible in old town, old city, Jerusalem, but that room in particular doesn't seem to be any more special, unique, unusual than any other upper room within the old city of Jerusalem. But it is the room that is honored as being the upper room, that upper room, where Jesus did gather with disciples for one last celebration of the Seder meal, of the Passover meal, of his earthly ministry with and through his disciples. During the course of the meal, he took some bread and he broke the bread and said to his disciples, this bread is my body. And after the end of the meal, he took the cup of wine and said that this wine is his blood the body and the blood of the new covenant, the new way that Christ opened for us to relate to his Father God, not based on ethnicity or race, but on the love of God, the opening of God's generous promise to each and every one who would believe in his son, Jesus Christ. We look at this bread and this wine in many, many different ways. We look at it as sustenance. We look at it as enjoyment by ourselves, in quarantine, with our friends, hopefully sooner rather than later, in a restaurant or at a friend's house. We are sustained by the real presence of Jesus that is present when we remember to do this eating together. And that becomes the challenge for us in this most unusual Holy Week, when it is so difficult, nigh unto impossible, to be together to be at the same table, partaking of the same bread and wine, the same body and blood, the same holy communion. How might we fulfill Jesus' final command to his disciples to love one another when the best that we immediately think of is a virtual hug, is a best wish, is a greeting over the phone from a distance. How can we love one another in a time of social distancing, of physical separation, of isolation, of quarantine? It's a challenge not only for clergy with their congregations, but it's a challenge for each and every one of us that are our social beings that are designed by God with a need to connect to one another, to be in communion, in communication, in the presence of one another. The simplest way is obviously 
to make a phone call, to write a text, to send an email, to utilize social media, various communication platforms, Skyping, Zoom, Google Duo, these ways to at least be face-to-face -face with one another. There's an opportunity to even go to the tried and true old-fashioned way of writing a letter, sending a note, perhaps a funny card or a sentimental card or a heartfelt good wish sent through the mail. And I was in a conversation earlier today with a friend from Petersburg and reflecting on the difficulty of carrying out one's ministry, of functioning as a Christian in the world. And very quickly, far sooner than I came to it, he said, pray. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. We'll pray for one another. And in that communication of that spiritual bond between two praying Christians, there is the real presence of Jesus Christ. God's love poured out in his son Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and most overwhelmingly, wonderfully, miraculously, on the Easter morning we're all looking for, when Jesus, from the dead, from the darkness and the emptiness of the tomb, rises to new life that he shares with us each time that we eat this unique meal together, and in the absence of that real presence in communion, the Spirit of Christ rises within our eating a meal in prayer for and with one another. So I commend that recommendation to you to pray for one another that we, together with the Spirit of Christ, with the love of God, will make it through this most trying and difficult time with our lessons learned, with our changes carried forward into a new way of being the church and being the church with one another. Amen.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that they may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to departed eternal rest, let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. So may the blessing of the God who calls the people out of Egypt call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace a journey of challenge and risk. May the blessing of the Son who kneels and washes our feet call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace and serve those we meet on the journey. May the blessing of the Spirit who weaves dreams of a new community, call us out from our comfort and our safety to provide welcome and hospitality to strangers as well as friends. Amen. <laughs>